Last time I covered this topic, people had some things to say. So this time I'm gonna dive into both sides of the story. And what I found might surprise you. The gold-backed crypto debate ends here. The Mosiwatunya gold coin has gone on sale in Zimbabwe. Inflation is everywhere. You have to be careful. Money has no intrinsic value and cannot be redeemed, but it's made legal tender through government decree. We really don't know where the market will go until we see our inflation and the economy play out. First, we've got to talk about the difference between these two actions. So I think people have an issue and they can they convolute backing and pegging. So I want to make the distinction between the two. If something is pegged, then it's fixed to that value. And I hear a lot of people speak about XRP being backed, quote unquote, by gold, and then the price being moved to whatever the equivalent of gold would be. That would be a pegging. And that would actually cause a lot of issues because yeah, then XRP wouldn't be able to scale globally as more value moved onto the network. They would have to revalue gold every time they needed to do that. But any item that is tokenized on the network and may even back another currency that's issued on top of the XRPL, such as a stable coin or a CBDC, could be a backing for XRP as well, because XRP is gonna to have to provide the liquidity to transfer that value. When, when I think about backing, yeah. I, I look at it as the real world asset. You could have energy, you could have gold, you could have a lot of things that it could be that could be tokenized and back a CBDC or stable coin. And then that would be a quote unquote backing for XRP. So now that we know that we have to see if it's possible to back XRP with a commodity. So the IMF set out a document that defines all the different types of crypto assets. First up, you have security tokens like Ethereum. <laughs> the next one is a utility token, and this isn't really what you think. Think more along the lines of a gaming token or a cryptocurrency gift card for a restaurant, rather than the asset that you think of immediately in your mind. Then you've got unbacked crypto assets, and Bitcoin would fall under this category, as well as XRP technically at this moment in time would also fall under that category. Then you've got stable coins like USDT, and finally CBDCs. Each of those have their own definitions and XRP, where that fits in this whole thing, it doesn't truly fit into any category. In fact, there is actually a new categorization of a token that would need to be established in order to make it fit into this new system. And that would be asset-backed crypto assets. And you're thinking, well, yeah, Lewis, obviously. However, you can't actually do this directly. Matt Hamilton is right. XRP, for example, cannot be directly backed by gold. But fear not, there is a workaround and it's mind-numbingly simple. I think when people say you can't back a token or something, certainly you can. I mean, there's multiple papers. I mean, you can go to uh, xrpl.org and read a whole blog post on tokenizing assets. Uh, so it absolutely can be done. I think maybe the dispute comes a little around almost arguing from two sides of the coin. Maybe they're saying you can't take a physical asset and put that on a blockchain, which is yeah, yes. th okay, that, that makes sense. The other side of the coin is that you take all of the indicia of ownership, all of the rights associated with owning the physical asset and put that on the token, you know, embody that, mint that as a token, and then holding that token becomes the same as effectively having all of the rights associated with the physical asset. That's where we believe the whole world is headed, uh, that, that there will be a digital representation of all physical assets, you know, in the future. And that that's part of the, a lot of the work that's being done now by developers and, and um, project entrepreneurs. We've had numerous conversations with a bunch of different entrepreneurs and businesses, some who are already tokenizing gold, others who are, you know, tokenizing organizing other commodity assets. So absolutely the way of the future. So if it's so easy to work around that issue, it opens up the question of how do you even define backing anyway? It's a technical nuance to say that gold is not going to back XRP because XRP is going to be backed by all of the value that is put on this ledger and settled on this ledger. That's going to be gold, it's going to be silver, and I believe that you're going to see almost every commodity tokenized and put on the XRP ledger, along with real estate, 
I think that we're ready to handle some derivatives. We're ready to, obviously they're moving fast forward ahead with cross-border payments is what, you know, the, the public test that's being seen by everyone, right? But I believe that you're gonna see tokenized stocks, bonds, commodities, everything on the XRP ledger and others. And I wanna reiterate, many people know where I stand as, you know, very big fan of XRP. Other ledgers are going to get pieces of this action as well. So why do we even need to back digital assets in the first place? Like, why are we even having this conversation? Well, let's have a look at where we are in the world right now. Inflation is higher than ever. The cost of living is going up. As a result, debt goes up and the people of the world can no longer afford to live the same lifestyle that they've been living. And this has all happened because the world reserve currency being the US dollar only holds value because of what the US government have said its value is. And this is the hilarious truth that the current financial system exists within and has existed for my whole entire life. And if you were born any time after the 1970s, 70s, it's been your whole life too. It's inevitable that the flaw in the system would cause this financial downward spiral that we're seeing right now. And the process of backing a crypto asset with a commodity would stabilize the system and it would erase the chances of seeing this spiral that we're seeing now. But here's where it gets juicy. So as it stands right now, we have the US dollar as the world reserve currency. The dollar sits right up there as what we'll call the king SDR. SDR stands for special drawing rights and it's effectively an asset that is issued by the IMF. And in times of crisis, SDRs can help to recover these bad financial situations. Anyway, underneath the King SDR, you have a basket of other SDRs with varying percentages of weighting. For example, the US dollar holds about 41.73% weighting. You have the Euro with about 31%, the Chinese won with about 11%, the Japanese yen with about 8%, and the British pound sterling at about 8% as well. So what you've got is fiat currencies backing fiat currencies. That's really weird, right? What if there is another way to do this? One that involves crypto assets and a backing system of commodities. Let's reimagine a system where the US dollar is dethroned as the world reserve currency. This process is called de-dollarization and there's been plenty of research like I've covered in previous videos about how the BRICS nations are actually going through the process of de-dollarizing. Something needs to go in that top position. Something needs to be world reserve currency. But I think that we need to start looking at XRP as the standard as the currency. And it's a key thing that differentiates XRP from the rest of the space is the true nature of XRP being a currency. It's not just a tech. You know, we're, we're investing in software, we're investing in tech, but XRP being that native currency and Ripple working on their goal of making it a world reserve currency is much different than the rest of the space. And I would argue that many crypt, quote unquote cryptocurrencies have not actually created that strong of a currency. They have a token. And, mm. and, and so once again, yeah, I think that you're right. I think that people saying that value getting tokenized on the XRP ledger isn't going to affect the XRP's value, the XRP price. I, I, I think that that's mistaken. Well, think about this. The SDR right now is backed by five currencies. XRP is going to be backed by every currency and every commodity in every form of value on the planet. Mm. So in my opinion, it's already equivalent to an SDR and we just put names on things. So basically there's no code that says that the United States military backs the US dollar. So there's guys in the, in, in, in the conversation right now that are saying, well, there's nowhere in the code. So it technically cannot be backed by these tokens, right? Or the value. But for all intents and purposes, right? more value that's getting put on that ledger is going to increase the value of that ledger, of that underlying asset, that underlying native currency, XRP, in this instance. And I've long compared X, uh, you know, Ripple to the IMF or the Bank of International Settlements. And in fact, I'd argue that they're kind of a little bit of both, right? They're, they're issuing, they have control of the world reserve currency, the world reserve digital currency, XRP, through that escrow account and having such a large supply. But then they also are a settlement clearing house, similar to the BIS. But what assets are going to be on the top? Well, here's two data points. Central banks are buying more gold than they have in 55 years. And the most amount of central banks are meeting with Ripple. If anybody wants to challenge that, they can show me <laughs> that Algorand's had 50 plus meetings with central banks or any of these other utility cryptocurrencies that I do like. Quants on the Digital Pound Foundation, Digital Euro, right? You, you know, these, these crypto projects are making appearances, but we have two facts from my research. 
and this is very well agreed upon and documented with gold they're, the pace that they're buying gold is the highest level in 55 years since the last time they reset the currency. And then they're sitting down with Ripple. And we also have already two central bank digital currencies built on the XRP ledger right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm running with those data points to tell me that XRP and gold are going to be at the top. In order for this to happen, XRP essentially becomes the king SDR. However, one of the fundamental characteristics of an SDR is that it cannot be owned by any private individual. And this causes a slight problem because there are probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of wallets that have what we call dust. This dust is tiny trace amounts of XRP there's just residue after transactions in a wallet that is since forgotten about. I can say from my own experience, I've got like six or seven wallets that have trace amounts of XRP that I just don't use. I don't even log into those wallets anymore. And because that dust XRP is still technically owned by the individual, for that reason, XRP couldn't become an SDR. Unless, of course, they reprogrammed a portion of XRP that's not on the market. I don't know, like the escrow or something. The escrow. What if they reprogrammed the escrow XRP and made all the tokens there the XRP SDR, essentially creating a different token. To me, it makes most sense that the escrow account is already accounted for, meaning that Ripple have already got contracts in place that would allow for the release of XRP to certain institutions when the court case is resolved. For me, I see that as a likely outcome. But what happens if XRP is the chosen King SDR and the escrow is already accounted for, meaning you can't draw escrow tokens from the escrow to become SDRs? You might have connected the dots already. Could the IMF, for example, incentivize people to offer up their XRP, that XRP then being sent over to them for them to reprogram into SDR XRP. Okay, let's relax. I know this is a touchy subject. So let's explore some other options for how this new system might look. Let's say the world reserve currency, the King SDR, isn't XRP. So I don't believe that XRP will be the global reserve digital asset. I believe it's just the liquidity provider for all the transactions globally. So there will be multiple reserve uh, currencies that sit within the IMF's basket, which is designated as the SDR or the special drawing right. There's a potential, Brad Garlinghouse mentioned this when he was speaking to the director of the IMF, that somebody would have to adopt XRP as their national currency in order for it to sit within that basket. So what's the role of XRP in this system? Well, it's the rails for payments of everything. It's the web that connects the world reserve currency to the CBDCs and the CBDCs to the assets or commodities that back those CBDCs. The transfer of value across the globe is still facilitated by XRP and the XRP ledger. Or is it a blend of both structures where you have XRP as that king SDR or world reserve currency and it's the payment rails for all the value that's being transferred around the world. In this way XRP would kind of just work like the US dollar does right now but with the exception that it is now backed by physical assets and potentially up to 20 commodities. Actually using it to transmit value but then the other bucket is effectively like the escrow right it's the it's the what is held off market in order to store value and um, if if people approach the the thinking of the value from a completely transactional side, then they're they're just going to see the price is too low mm -hmm. because it, it gets into all how fast it goes and all stuff. You don't you don't need to hold it that long and all this and it can be used over and over and over and all that is true. But at some point, because it's being used so predominantly in the marketplace there somebody thinks to themselves i'm just going to hold a little bit because it's going to it's because it's being used for transactions i'll be able to use it for transactions in the future and that's called a store of value use case as soon as that happens you basically start this um what we call the uh, virtuous cycle. Virtuous cycle, yeah, of, of it kind of pinging back and forth against these use cases until equilibrium can be established. Yeah. So, um, if if there if there is use as a store of value, it almost necessitates the prices to set very very high. 
Because of how easy it is to work around this whole you can't back a digital asset with a physical commodity by way of simply just tokenizing a new token on the blockchain and pegging that directly to the physical asset or commodity itself, creating a backing via tokenization, I feel like this is a debate we don't even need to be having right now. Anything will happen if the powers that be want it to happen. But to me, it just reiterates the point. Ripple called their XRP a world reserve digital currency or said that they wanted to make XRP a world reserve digital currency. And I, I, I identify my XRP as a reserve currency on my balance sheet as well. I understand that my bags are a little bit smaller and people are like, okay, cool story, Zach, you call it a reserve currency, congratulations. But that's, that's the argument that we're having right now. Is it an ESDR? Is it a reserve currency? Well, Ripple's an institution that's calling it a reserve currency and they're treating it like one and how they're distributing the X, uh, the XRP from the escrow account and how they're returning 80% of it back to the escrow. That to me sig signals that they might identify their XRP as a reserve currency. Yeah. Right? But that these guys argue that because it's not in the code or because it's not official legal tender by the government that it can't be the reserve or, you know, if, if they can't find it on a document or if they can't see it in the code, it's not real. So can they back XRP with gold? Well, sure, if they wanted to. One thing I do think they want, though, is to go to a more stable financial system. Is is we don't know what their plans are with XRP, right? And we've seen some pretty interesting things that lead us to believe that they're interested, right? Some institutions like R3 tried to get $5 billion, and that's just R3. So this is why we're having conversations with the lawyers to understand how we can protect our, our assets here, especially in the United States, where we have a precedent of them outlining us owning gold and doing a buyback and doing a set price. So when people say that, you know, we're just just crazy for, for having conversations about protecting our assets, I think that's so immature and it's really unfortunate because it misses the point on why we're having this conversation. This is an inevitability. We need to position ourselves in the assets that are going to be used in this new system. My personal bets are placed with XRP, XLM and XDC. But there are a range of others that you might be interested in. And I suggest you probably watch this video to find out what they are. There is actually another inevitable technology that's coming. And it's definitely coming. But no one truly understands the impact it's going to have on our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to explore this topic in the next documentary video. What they don't want you to know about central bank digital currencies. These videos take a long time to put together. So if you want to support the creation of videos just like this, consider joining as a member on this channel. Two ways you can do it. You can just join the Discord using the link in the description and follow the instructions there, or you can click join next to the subscribe button. You'll be able to join a community of people who are like-minded, they do their research, they listen to others' opinions, and we essentially form this community of researchers, and it's a very valuable place to be. And if you enjoyed this video, you might want to consider watching this one. This is where we talk to experts around the world about what price they believe our precious XRP will be worth in the coming years. There's something for everyone and every point of view in that video, so go and have a watch. Go on then. What, what are you waiting for? Look at that. Look at that thumbnail. Don't you want to click it? It's, good it's a good video, trust me. Go on. I'm, I can wait here forever. I'm not going to. I'm going to go now, but you can go that way.